justice for all. Before we start our business and call to the community, for anyone who would like to speak to us about anything that's not on the agenda tonight, this is not. Oh, sorry. Um, a call to the community. For any, this is a time for any citizen who would like to address our commission on any non-agenda item. Is there any requests this week? Um, so our business item eight, approval of the minutes. And I'll motion. make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, next up, the design plans. Residential request to allow a five foot tempered glass pool in the small fence at 595 North Park Road. Um, and Mr. Proku, you introduce us to the project and then next time the map can speak. Thank you, Chair. Uh, DRB members, John Proku, I'm your planning consultant working with the annual employee on this project tonight. Uh, the first one that we have an applicant for tonight is a residential application, 595 North Mahara Lane. Um, existing home, beautiful single story from a cul de sac. And um, the applicant would like to construct a new fence uh, for a pool and or spa with tempered glass. Here's the site, so it's south of uh, Camelback, west of Dysart. You can see it here. Obviously, how long you that. Again, a cold set lot on uh, the golf course. Uh, this is a rendering, so um, basically, um, it would be a enclosure about five feet tall, non climbable. Um, there are some detailed specs that the applicants provided. Those are most of the sheets in the uh, DRB packet today. Um, on the best practices on how to uh, use this type of uh, rather than raw iron, um, use this type of enclosure for a cooler spot. And here's a, a front elevation of the property 0.5 acres zoned R1. Uh, as I said, single story home, about 2,673 square feet. Here's a plot plan um, of the property. And this is an example that the applicant provided of uh, uh, existing enclosure uh, where the temperate glass has been used elsewhere. We do have a section in our zoning code uh, regarding um, property owner responsibility for uh, pool fencing. Um, our ordinance didn't, doesn't really recognize this type of building uh, material. Um, that being said, we're, we're perfectly okay with it. The section from 30.04 reads, each property owner shall landscape and maintain all property in the of streets or rights of way. Property owners must provide a wall or fence around the swimming pool as stipulated in the city building codes. Um, existing building code, like I said, will be dated. We do not anticipate this kind of building material. Um, before a this type of enclosure. We have reviewed it internally in the field that we're comfortable with it. Um, we're recommending approval of the DRB application and the pool spa enclosure. Um, we're just suggesting that the applicant continue to work with the licensed contractor that they work on. And the applicant is here. Uh, if you'd like to hear from uh, the owner uh, directly. Can you just give us your name and, and any additional information that you think we should know? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually here on behalf of the homeowners themselves. So I work for California Pools and Landscape. So we've been in business in the Valley for 34 years, uh, and we have been operated for that time. Um, and we've been building all over the Valley uh, throughout that time. Uh, I um, This homeowner came to me as a referral from there. Some of the other than pool for them. Uh, in, Itself, um, and they have a beautiful property that opens up to the to the uh, to the golf course. No, the, the biggest reason uh, that they bought this house is is for that view uh, to look out. There's no kind of back 
property line wall that they have within their property. There are two neighbors to their left and to their right do. Uh, it's about four foot tall, not trying to throw anyone else under the bus, but it's about four foot tall, super climbable if you're any kind of athletic individual. Um, and they really just want to be able to put in a performance spot back there, something that's a little bit more um, substantial in terms of its aesthetic, its appeal, rather than kind of a, a buy it from the market, you know, from Costco and put it in the backyard. So it really add a nice touch to the backyard. Uh, but we need to make sure that it's safe uh, because anything of, uh, over 18 inches of water needs to be protected against any kind of drowning. Now, this kind of spa would have a, a cover that would go over it that would be lockable as well. Uh, but I myself have a four and one year old and I take this very seriously as do they as they've raised uh, multiple kids themselves. Um, and with this, they didn't ever, they don't want to take away from that beautiful look uh, going back up to the golf course. Uh, and so um, I've, I've worked with many clients throughout the valley on being able to provide a tempered glass uh, that is uh, very, very substantial in terms of its, uh, it's, it's not a cheap product for them. Uh, very nice look, but it doesn't take away from the look out to the golf course. Um, and so I, I you know, ask you guys to, to review that and think through. It's not going to be a full property line wall, uh, however, just kind of that enclosure as you put together that enclosure around that spa, so it really segments it. It sits far back away from the golf course itself, uh, right really up against the house. Um, as you can see here, it comes off the house maybe 20 feet uh, to give it enough space, uh, adds it to their patio, but that actually sits about uh, probably 50 feet off from the golf course itself. A big established uh, orange citrus tree off to the left from here. Uh, so a lot of protection from the golf course itself, but again, tempered glass, so any golf balls coming through there, we're not gonna be dealing with shards of glass all over the place either. Uh, but it provides the safety, security to prevent any kind of drowning. The door that goes with this is a self-closing, self-latching that meets all requirements uh, for cities uh, throughout the valley as well. Uh, what questions do you have for me? Where, where is the door? I, I don't. I don't. I don't have I don't, it. see a patio door. Right? Yeah, I don't have it in this exact one. But what I, if, if you don't have me going up, um, I would actually put a door uh, right in this section, so they would be able to walk out of a lot of the patio. And so the door would be in this area, uh, but then they would also have a self-closing, self-locking mechanism on the actual house exiting right. out through that area as well to meet code. So it really kind of segregate that section off. Yeah, I, I noticed that there was no access from the rest of the patio onto this. So mm -hmm. it, it, uh, my, my 3D modeling isn't isn't. Uh, well, you'll work it, on that, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to work on it, but right, yeah. uh, you know, as, as best as I can to try to provide. Call, call, it, call us back. Do you have any clips that are going on the sides of the glass, or uh, no? Man, there's, there's, there's actually two. You can't just do the vertical. Uh, yes, so they pour, uh, they pour a 8x8 uh, eight eight continuous footer, then each pane of glass has double spigots that come up to hold it in place, uh, and so then it's frameless as well. So it keeps a really clean look, uh, but that holds uh, wind loads, you can see in the actual packet of information, it'll break down wind loads, uh, everything that you do need in there uh, to be able to, uh, to sustain that, but it's a continuous a continuous footer that these spigots, each one would have two, so that again, the 3D rendering doesn't do it justice. Each each panel would have two spigots that come up, uh, and then it's a continuous footer that comes through here with one uh, number four uh, steel throughout that reinforced. Do you have any clips on the corners? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, that's what it's like. I think if you've got it, is it like a height thing? If it was a taller, would it? I'm assuming five or older. Mode. Um, not, I mean, as far as there are a few additional pictures that the uh, so Sonoran glass actually does provide that. Um, so if you actually go back to the sample picture, you can see an example of the door. Um, so this, the door itself would be framed, so you would have much more of a frame in terms of that door itself. And then, as you can see, two double spigots to hold that five foot. Those clips are a lot bigger than what it's on the other door. Or... Yes, yeah, excuse me, I'm sorry. Not a problem. 
Yeah, so that's, that's a limitation to, to what my 3D uh, rendering really is. So it's really more of just an artistic yes. rendition. And I have many other uh, pictures as well of other sure, you know, cool enclosures. Uh, if you wanted to see them, I'm happy to, to share. So the, um, where is the, are you actually being in this, I assume you are, where is the, the uh, mechanical equipment going to go for the, associated with the spot? Is it all just like... So the spot itself is self-contained. So a performance spot, it's got, it basically just runs electric, and then within that masonry build around, it's going to have its own UV ozone clean sanitation system, as well as its own heater electronic uh, within there. So no additional equipment that's necessary for that. So no additional high score or anything. Okay, and so what are the materials then? That, I mean, since we'll be able to see the materials from the golf course? Yeah, and absolutely. The of the... um, and that's uh, what the client has, um, they really like is a tile, uh, so a nice modern tile uh, that would go on the face of it. Um, so this all on the patio here, uh, we haven't finalized this. Uh, of course, they're waiting for approval to be able to move forward. However, this would be uh, wood uh, a looking wood grain, but it's actually a porcelain paver. Uh, so their patio opens up, and then this would mimic wood exactly what they have inside. So it's an inside outside kind of continuation. Then on the outside here um, would be some uh, 12 by 24 um, inch, um, basically porcelain tiles that run vertically on that, and then uh, continue on with that porcelain kind of coping that would go on top of it as well. And then the inside is going to be a, um, I guess, silver uh, insert, that right, right, acrylic insert. Mm -hmm. the, the examples we were showing are like commercial projects, is that right? Or is it uh, like there are, no, this one would be residential. Um, and then I've got a few others that are also residential, and then I do have some that are commercial. But the same product is approved for commercial use? Mm -hmm. and, and other yeah, okay. yeah, like this is, um, you don't mind me approaching? Yeah. Um, this one would be uh, for a commercial project so here. Um, same with this one. It looks like this one's a community pool as well. Um, same with this. This this seems to be an apartment Perfect. complex uh, as well. And then this is the same one that's up there. Yeah, I have I'm cool pictures. Yeah. My uh, my um. I think you're doing a lot of this. Yeah. Well. Um, more and more, it's really expensive, so not yeah, not many people want to go that route. They'll usually go like a wrought iron fence. They'll go, but but not many people don't have full exterior property on them. Yeah. So this is a very unique property where they bought it specifically because it didn't have that. They had that ability to walk out on the golf course. Um, and so, it, I mean, and I've got, I've got pictures of the property you're looking at as well, if that makes any, any kind of a difference to you, but um, that, that was one of the biggest reasons, and they really want to be able to have a spot back there. Um, and so, you know, me trying to rack my brain on everything I possibly do, I, I reached out to this kind gentleman. Uh, Daniel has been a phenomenal resource for me, and I've really appreciated everything you've done to help me and kind of guide me through this process. So I appreciate all your time as well. Yes, my only last question was maintenance and does it get dirty and who has to clean it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, I'm like, that's the one thing that would, would take me. I'm like, nope, no, it's not clean, right? Not cleaning my desk. Yeah, you know, just uh, <laughs> uh, hose it down and then squeegee it, you know, it's like yeah. your shower. It's the same with uh, windows, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just gotta wash windows. There's yeah. a lot of, a lot of glass. It's squeegee. Yeah, they don't want to do that. <laughs> His son, his son is gonna do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's my grandkids. Yeah. But also, I guess it would be similar to any other kind of that you've got to maintain things. I would think in, in this particular instance that this is really not, it's not a line of sight thing for anybody. No. This is just up next to the house yeah. in closing a, a hot tub. Yeah. yeah. So. Keep the wind off too in the cold, when it's cold and you want to use your jacuzzi, keep the wind off of you too. Yeah, there you go. Sure. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right. Any uh, other questions for the applicant and for staff? Uh, someone like to do a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the uh, glass enclosure for 595 Bahar Wing. 
um, based on um, the information provided. I'll second. A motion to second. Any further discussion? And all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank Good you. Job. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm going to be very excited to call that. Thank you so much. Daniel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm having lunch tomorrow with Dick Meese. Oh, yeah. He's next door. Oh, yeah. He won't mind. <laughs> he won't. Oh. And Susan and Rachel, congratulations. You guys sworn in today. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to run off to my little two yeah, boys. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. I appreciate thank your time. Good evening. Thanks. Thank uh, next up on our agenda, design plans. Um, next is proposed Welcome Plaza. Located at the northeast corner of Woodlawn Boulevard and Mistral Road. Okay, so. Yeah, Chair of uh, DRV members, this is for a mixed use project that we're all very familiar with. It's uh, part of the Litchfield Square project. I'm going to give a brief PowerPoint presentation, and uh, Woody's got a couple of things to add since he's the overall project manager for Litchfield Square. So, this is the northeast corner of Litchfield um, Road and Woodlawn Boulevard. We're looking for design review approval for not just a bus shelter, but really like a welcome center for the Shield Square and the Justin exhibits will show you. This is on city owned property right on the, the immediate northeast corner of the intersection. Here's the project site, so it's just off we're located just off the map uh, from where we are tonight. So again, northeast corner of the intersection. The uh, Underpass underneath Litchfield Road is uh, just to the south of the site. City Hall, you can see just uh, to the east. Here's an image uh, facing east on uh, the north side of Wave 1, so it's roughly 0.1 acre in size. And again, it's part of the Litchfield Square Mixed Use Project. Uh, the request is that a uh, bus shelter uh, is being designed under a Valley Metro grant. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar, Valley Metro runs the bus system and the light rail system for the Metro Phoenix area. Uh, the shelter itself will not be constructed until we have a designated bus line on the trail road. Um, we are looking at building the rest of the welcome center, and we've got some more detailed um, drawings from that in the next couple of slides. Some keynotes, kind of hard to see. So, number one uh, would be the bus shelter itself. Two, uh, we're looking at some decorative screen walls with seating for pedestrians. Three, a plaza with decorative paving. Four, baller lights. By the gateway monument, which I understand has already been approved by DRV and by city council. And then obviously, we want the area to be attractive with landscaping, so that's um, the areas of six. Some renderings uh, for DRV this is um, just showing how the, the space might function. Another, uh, another view you can see the road to the south. This one would be. Uh, image is facing towards the east for seconds. So what the bus shelter uh, structure would actually look like, so uh, shaded facilities, uh, areas for people to get away from the travel lanes on the street. Um, in conclusion, uh, we believe the design really fits in well with the overall Litchfield Square concept provides a good aesthetic for the surrounding area, and staff does recommend approval of the application subject to the exhibits provided by the applicant. I'll turn it over to Woody. There's just a couple of lines of design tweaks um, that he might go over briefly. And yeah, the chance to own that a fair amount of the commission um, of the board. So, um, what happened here is that we really first came up with the idea of this welcome plaza um, as a way to um, enhance the experience of people arriving at the site, whether it's by bicycle or on their own feet or 
you know, if they're being dropped off at the ride share or, you know, whatever, they're arriving at this location. Um, you know, a lot of people will just drive into the, the field store, but um, the bus shelter itself and the bus stop, this has been designed and built now for a future bus station, bus stop, um, because it's shown on the ADOT, I'm sorry, the MAG 2040 transportation plan that a bus route will be extended. There's currently one that comes north a little bit on this field road, but it will be extended all the way past the Air Force Base sometime before 2040. Now, <laughs> sounds a long ways off, but you know, if we're pretty successful here in, in attracting a lot of uh, shoppers and buyers and so on from other parts of the valley, um, you know, it may create more of a demand for a bus route and it may be needed uh, sooner than that. Um, the other thing that um, I think is important about the bus shelter and the bus stop in general is that, uh, again, if we have a lot of retail restaurants, maybe some office, maybe even some residential, um, you know, the people who work in the stores and work in the restaurants, you know, might want to ride the bus, you know, to Woodfield Square and back home again. So that's another possibility. Um, and then we wanted to tie it all into the Gateway Monument sign, which you have seen before, by security with that comprehensive sign back here. Um, so this kind of ties it all together in, um, as kind of a way to enter the project, if you will, if you're on your feet or if you're on a bike or whatever, um, call park. So the, the main design change that we've made since these renderings were done is that you see the sidewalk kind of comes at an angle, I guess it would be kind of to the southeast from the main sidewalk. We have, um, I didn't think that made sense because we're trying to get people into the center of Whitfield Square. So we have angled that sidewalk back to the northeast. So if you're coming off of the main sidewalk, you'll be uh, heading a little bit to the northeast, which kind of you know, uh, aims you in the direction of the center of Whitfield Square. Now, behind it is a developable lot. And when that lot comes through for development, we will um, make sure that that sidewalk is extended you know, on into the project and connects to either Maloma Avenue or the Honeysuckle or whatever it makes sense. Um, <clears throat> as John mentioned, um, we uh, got a grant from Arizona Water Reforms Valley Metro, Blue Valley Metro. Um, and it's very restrictive on what you can use the money for. And in our case, the only thing I've come up with was the bus shelter. So even knowing that it may not be built for several years, a uh, few years anyway, um, you know, I talked to the city manager and said, well, let's go ahead and get the money, get it designed, and we can put it on the shelf. And you know, once the still square gets going, the buildings are up and people are coming, there may be you know, more of a uh, ride share demand or you know, maybe there'll be a circular bus or something that would come by here that you know people would utilize the shelter in the, in the weather. Um, so that's that's kind of the story. The, the other thing is um, for the, for this bus shelter, it is specific in This bus this bus shelter is specifically tied into Whitfield Square because again we want people to know when they get to this point that they are at this field square. I mean, we have 26 volt for the bus sign and you know, the lettering on the front of the bus shelter, so it should be pretty obvious. But anyway, um, the diamond pattern, um, we, we've already used that on the main restroom awnings, if you will, they're not really awnings, but they're, you know, shaded on the, on the building and then there's a uh, kind of a shade structure that goes over the Freeway between the men's and women's. So that 
diamond pattern that graduates from small to bottom to larger to top. That ties back, and somehow we'll explain this. Maybe we'll have a little flat on the shoulder. But this ties back to the original Goodyear tire diamond pattern that they had on their tires back in the early 1900s when they were first producing tires for automobiles. So there's a you know, kind of a neat tie back to Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and then Paul Richard and so on. Um, in terms of the materials, uh, the diamond pattern steel will be cork diamond steel. Um, and the columns, although they look a little silvery there, I think we're going to end up with um, something that goes more towards brown. But those will be welded steel. Um, Welded in that pattern and uh, either painted or powdered in, in some shade that um, you know complements the portion steel. There, there, I think that looks a little too silver and maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the gray with the brown is okay. I don't know. But, um, you know, if you're concerned about that, I'd be glad to bring you know, the final selection back to you. Know, Make sure you're comfortable with it. I had just a couple. Is there a bus turnout? Yes. Um, it's, we didn't actually build uh, a turnout because um, the actual start of the turnout would have been in the city of Goodyear. Mm -hmm. And um, they were very difficult to deal with in terms of just trying to do some minor. Um, you know, minor improvements on the northeast corner of that intersection. You know, the bolt kind of balled it out for the turnout. So we decided to just leave it as a painted turnout for now. Now, um, eventually we'll, but, but anyway, the, to answer your question, it's the third lane. So you got two travel lanes, okay. and then you got a right turn lane, and the right turn doubles as the bus. Okay, that's like, it's like if you're in a ride chair or something. They're stopping and people are coming to. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're out of the travel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now they might uh, be blocking people who want to make a right turn, but that right turn lane is so long. They can go that, around. You know, just like you, you know, you come up behind the bus and the bus is, you know, stopped, you can always just go around. And then the thing is that the bus thing faces west, so like I think the shade. Mm -hmm. Anytime afternoon is going to be hard. Yeah. Oh, Woody, I have a question for you. What is number two? I think it's number two. That's the thing in the back. Mm -hmm. okay. that's, a, that's a trellis. Um, so we'll have some, on some vines growing on that. The trellis has alternating panels, and they alternate between just a simple mesh um, and then one that has a laser cut um, palm. Um, motif, okay. which you'll also see in Litchfield Square. Mm -hmm. For example, at the corners of the intersections in Litchfield Square with the concrete, uh, we're going to sandblast that same pattern, that polyfron pattern, into the concrete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to add a little yeah. interest. In. So this is just an architectural thing. It's not really functional or doing. Well, it'll, it'll probably <coughs> Boom there or vines. Yeah, no, it's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't like boom there either. But <laughs> some people do. Um, but yeah, we'll probably you know have something. I know there's plantings. Um, if you're hoping for people to sit there. I would not put any bougainvilleas anywhere yeah. near there. <laughs> um, there's a there's a row of plantings on the other side, on you know the opposite side of the uh, of the city wall. I think um, you know, the same thing. I thought I had it in here. I have um, <coughs> let me back out of the PowerPoint. Well, that's all right. Um, I think you get the idea. Now, mm -hmm. so we're, we've got the sidewalk coming off as a, this great concrete, and then we transition to color concrete. Um, and then there's a, there's a row of pavers, and then back to color concrete. And, the materials will be identical to what you all proved for our first year. So if you remember back in 2021, I think it was 2021, um, we approved this, uh, these colors, you know, the acid ash, the sand blast, the pavers, these, these are 
This isn't. This is just a color palette. This yeah. isn't for. Yeah, that's, this is something that the uh, DRB saw back yeah. in 2021. And I, the only reason I brought it was so that you could tie okay. these the, yeah. these colors mm -hmm. in the papers. Um, the same ones that you used to over here. Yeah, because this isn't. This isn't what we're looking at. That was my point. Yeah. Shade. It doesn't. There's no overhang to it. On the, the, the roof, you mean? Yeah. No, they don't have a roof. Yeah. Oh, it has a roof. Yeah, but it doesn't roof. overhang. Just a, yeah, just a simple steel, slightly yeah. sloped back. I was saying, as soon as the sun goes overhead, and mm -hmm. there's going to be no shade. It will be except for except for right where the screen wall is. So. Yeah. Which I I have a little bit of concern, I guess, with that because I just. I think it's um, it almost makes it seem very closed off with the bus stop. So then I think um, I'm concerned that it might become, you know, kind of it, it would be difficult to maintain, and it could be like um, a site that might be convenient for loitering or for, for what for loitering, loitering. Oh. or you know, because it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of a nice concealment. Yeah, that, you know, that's one of the downsides of bus stops, bus shelters. Yeah, well, in this one in particular, is not that open actually in that one spot. Yeah, but. I think it's open enough that you know the police have a thing called accept that, which is you know they want to be able to see into these kind of structures. So that's one reason why we have the diamond banner so that nobody can completely hide you know, behind a, a panel. Um, the other thing is that this is right on an arterial street, and the last thing I want to mention is the bench. Um, what we'll do is we'll put the, uh, if, if you've seen it at some bus shelters, they have a bench, but it's divided up into seats. For example, you know, the, the back of the bench, you have a rail that comes down to the seat, mm -hmm. and they put one of those every two feet or so, you know, 18 inches, whatever it is. So it, it discourages people from using the seat as a sleeping bag. Well, as you said though earlier, this is how many years out? Yeah. I, I yeah, I don't know. So it'll probably come back to design review at some future point. Yeah, it could, yeah, or it could be completely redesigned. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we're we're just taking advantage of the free money that you know yeah, the metro's in on out. So do we know that? I'll go ahead and mention that. Um, we got another grant from Valley Metro this year, um, and the application I put in was to take this basic bus shelter design, and which is specific to Litchfield Square, and turn it into a standard set of plans for building bus shelter anywhere in the city. So, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 years from now, we'll probably need to have 14, 15 bus shelters, you know, if we have enough bus routes going to Camelback and so on, I certainly. Um, so what we're, what we're going to do with that money is to take this basic design and turn it into something that's not specific to those fields where it could be used anywhere in the city. Mm -hmm. and, and put those plans on the shelf for one of the So, you know, basically we've got a couple of free designs we'll be built someday. So to that end, um, it, like, is the 
I mean, uh, the requirement to receive that funding that you need approval from the city, the DRB on the plans, or I guess I'm, I'm just kind of curious, like if, we, if we're not, if it's not going to be built right away, why we need approval from us right now? Um, so we could finish the plan with this. I mean, from my perspective, I would like to not make a decision until we have to, you know, because I think that there, there could be, like, yeah, like, when uh, if somebody comes in and develops the properties right behind it, like, there might be some design elements that, you know, this doesn't match yeah, with that, now, or... Yeah, and that's fine, you know, we just need to finish the plan so that we can tell the people who gave us the money that, you know, here's what we did, you know, yeah. we spent the money wisely. Um, one other... Sure, I was going to say... Commission or commission board members, we can, if we could um, get the DRB approval tonight, if you're comfortable with that, we would always, could always come back and present to you if, like, if uh, the parcel, like Woody was describing, comes in right behind here, if there's a need to change the design, we can always come back and the staff would bring that back to the DRB. Okay. I think that's that's what you're kind of doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I just it's, it's yeah. It seems to me if it, if this is out ten or fifteen years or something, yeah. then rather than this thing now. And a bus shelter. I want to make it clear the bus shelter is the, the welcome plaza is being built. Right. I think that's really all we're talking about is that yeah. bus shelter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing. The rest of it, I I know it's just that shelter for some reason. Kind of, I would like to shelter people before yeah. waiting. Shelter them from the sun is the most important thing in Arizona. Right. So um, that was my only, my only concern with this design. I'm a little bit concerned, I guess, about uh, getting a good feel for the scale because I feel like the, the like maybe the earlier renderings they show a bus stop that seems like it's a lot smaller it's in scale smaller. than yeah. what. That's true. And I, I mean, personally, this uh, feels pretty overpowering to me, honestly. The like not this one, the like final one. It just it yeah. seems like it's going to be really blocky and a strong element um and i don't i mean i'm not saying that i have formulated an opinion yet but i, I do i'm just wondering if maybe this is not the place where we want to have a strong design element is the bus stop you know what i mean like i don't i don't want necessarily i, I feel like it, it's a very important thing to have a bus stop but it maybe is one of those things you don't necessarily want to notice stand out yeah really strong against competing against other design elements right because I mean, we have that giant, yeah. like you know. Uh, I don't know if you, you know if you drive through Scottsdale, you'll see that they have numerous bus stop, bus shelter designs, and they're. I don't, I don't think there's any two that are the same. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like they try to it's have fine. a bus shelter in like Carolyn, for example, mm -hmm. that kind of fits in like that Carolyn. area. Yeah. But somewhere else, they use a different. You know, so, in that case, and materials and colors and so in that case, it's like a design choice, and it's after they already know what the context yeah. is, yeah. right? And if, so, if you leave this up to the Valley Metro, you'll get one of those, yeah, plain Jane, a great box, yeah, box. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, 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 yeah, you know, they stamp on that by the thousands, but yeah, that, that was the intent here was to be able to take. So a grant and come up with something that is very unique, you know, throughout the valley, um, and you know that would also say something about this building as well. You know, tie it into that whole historical perspective. We both things that monument sign sure. is that always going to be there, no matter what happens with the bus stop or anything else. Yes. Yeah. That monument sign is going to go there. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a key element of the welcome plaza. So, okay, that's right. and if, if you remember, um, the whole reason for having that spire design of a sign there was people, a lot of people are going to be coming here from I 10. So, as they are coming up Pittsfield Road, boom, there it is. You know, you're supposed to wait long. You know, so you'd say, okay, I'm here. I mean, I know a lot of people just rely on GPS. So. <laughs> Um, I don't care what the sign says, you know, GPS says on here. But that, yeah, so that, that was the idea was to kind of, rather than have that gateway sign standing there by itself, was to, you know, have it be 
a way to tell people, yeah, you're going to ride, and you know, if you're coming up in a ride chair, you get off right here, mm -hmm. walk, walk into the center. It's so, in the future, if you're on a bus. I'm sorry, I'm also still just a little bit unclear. So, what are we, if we're just approving the bus stop today, or also the, 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 the whole welcome the center with the, with the plantings and the, the city wall? Basically, that whole little point one acre. And the only thing I don't really like is the bus stops. So. Yeah. So, uh, I guess another, if, if we're talking about how it's all fitting together, another concern I have a little bit is the, the preparation of the um, like Corten or whatever it is. I, I mean, I'm seeing like several different patterns kind of all within one visual field. And I'm kind of starting to wonder if, like, if that's going to feel a little bit like it could be powerful maybe if it was, if we, if we, um, pick one and stick with that, or, or I don't know, I'm just worried that they're going to compete because there's a lot of preparation, but it's not all the same preparation. What do you mean, have some of it been solid, or? I'm yeah. not sure where that's going to be. Well, I guess I just mean, so the, um, the uh, found, what is it, the gateway um, thing, that seems to have some preparation, and a preparation on it. The, the gateway sign? Mm -hmm. It has, on the, on the back side of it, it has, a, yeah, it's a palm, it's a yeah. palm frond motif. So that's the same. It's the same palm frond as what's on the on those, basically. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So would that would make sense to use that pattern right. on the bus stop too, um, rather than introduce something different? Use the palm frond. Yeah. On the bus shelter. On the bus shelter. We tried that, yeah. and um, it it creates weird shaped openings. In the front of the, we tried it on the front panel. It creates weird shaped openings, and some of the palm ends are actually sticking out. So you know, somebody could sharp. kind of well, not that sharp, but somebody could get caught on that. Or, you know. um, we we tried that, and it just didn't look very good. It looked it looked too busy. Yeah. In that in that setting, you know. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm concerned about. Those, like, the context of all those things put together. If you're in that space, if like, the, just all the preparation is going to start feeling overpowering a little bit, you know. So I don't mean if that one has a trellis, and maybe it's well, you know, softened by friends. Yeah, know. but that's why I think it's good. We don't we don't want everything to look the same. So that's why we thought, you know, you you got the palm from motif over here, let's use the diamond motif over here because they both connect in the field where you will see both of them, you know, throughout the field. In fact, I don't, I don't think we ever showed you the clock tower. Um, we, have, we designed a 30 foot and a 32 foot clock tower that goes in the middle of the park. I don't know what we built, but it's designed. And it's a very sleek port pen that uses that same, uh, it has like three veins welded together, three legs, but they're you know, close together as well. And they have that diamond, that graduated diamond pattern up to the top. It's the top. It's really cool looking. And then, you know, the idea of the clock, well, similar to the Gateway sign, the idea of a clock tower is that um, it's a meeting point. You know, it's a wayfinding uh, element. So you can say, oh, there's a clock tower, so I need to go up here, you know, or I'll meet you at the clock tower, you know, one mm -hmm. more. That's a whole other story that John will be presenting to you soon. Chair of board members, Daniel Brown, a good point. Um, DRG approval is good for one year, so if, if the shelter has to be built in a year or things materialize on Jason Richfield's story, we'll come back and present, present to you again. Yeah. And we just felt that we didn't want to take this to completion without getting the right one. Okay. Any other questions for you? Uh, it's all right to make a motion. Yeah, I'll move that we uh, 
Okay, one year approval to the, uh, <laughs> what's this called? Bus shelter. Yeah, the bus shelter welcome. slash uh, welcome center, whatever this is. Um, and uh, so you can move forward with your design. Second. Motion and second on that the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess I should have said that. I, I really don't like the bus station, but, or the bus shelter, but I'll go off after we're done this one year. Um, stop report on current events. No. Uh, Thank you. Nice Chair, this evening. Okay. Any board member current events? Okay. Uh, then motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Sorry. All favor say aye. 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 Um, I was going to ask you. Um, is this a